it's, uh, thank you for you know thank you for, for agreeing to speak with me we're here to talk about cinderella's revenge uh i guess it's it's kind of like um you know winnie the pooh blood and honey has been out recently there seems to be this this new trend of horror films which kind of take a classic children's story and completely sort of distort them but the audiences seem to love it why why do you think that is it's a really really good question um i think as a society everybody's just getting darker and darker and darker <laughs> i think that's where i think that's where it's going no um i don't know i think there's always something fun about a story that you know right so you have a concept of where something's going and then it goes off piste <laughs> it's like what what um so the, the idea that you know what you expect going in and then it and then it sort of veers sideways i think is always kind of interesting for an audience there's it's like when you hear a song come on the radio and you know the words and then they sort of switch up the words but it's in the same melody and you're like wait what what i don't know there's something kind of interesting about it but the the winnie the pooh i've got to see that because i keep hearing so many people talk about it and i think you know obviously this trend is happening now where all these all these sort of classic fairy tales that are um, becoming public domain. I guess that's what's happening. I think that's why they're all, you know, people are going to start doing it with Disney and Walt Disney and all kinds of stuff. So it'll probably be interesting in all sorts of worlds soon but in regards to this. <laughs> I guess that I guess like when you think back, you know, like the, the Grimm's fairy tales that kind of inspired these stories weren't you know they were pretty dark you know I guess it's kind of we've all become too accustomed to the the Disney version which is kind of sanitize these stories but you know some of them are you know pretty bleak when you look when you actually you know read them very very true yes like nursery rhymes right and like all these sort of stories that are kind of told through generations and stuff is very true yeah I was saying that earlier because they do often have this really really dark exactly exactly what you said they have such a dark background and then they sanitize is the right word you know for children to to market them to to younger children and stuff but yeah so now we're just we're just going back and we're yeah. going back we're going darker we're going back further and much darker <laughs> yeah because uh, in cinderella's revenge you play the you know the fairy godmother but she's very unlike you know any on-screen iterations before how much fun was it you know sub you know subverting expectations I loved it. I, I actually read the script. They actually initially offered me the stepmother's role. Um, and I read the script and I I played that role. I play that kind of character a lot. But to play the twisted with a sense of humor character to me was so much more interesting. And I think they wanted to go a different way and they eventually sort of came around. <laughs> came around. They're like, okay, let her do it. <laughs> but um yeah, for me, the sense of humor and the idea, I call her the scary godmother. That's my, that's my joke. <laughs> um, the fact that she's just this little devil on her shoulder instead of the little angel, but, but in some ways trying to help her feel better. It's like Cinder, it's called Cinderella's revenge for a reason. You know, she's like this vigilante Cinderella and, and the idea that I'm there going, just, just do it. What is it? You know, just keep, just do what you want. Do what you need to do. It was so fun. I mean, it's so fun to play characters that that don't have any self awareness <laughs> or remorse. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. And one thing that I quite liked is, you know, you've got this you know, Cinder, you know, Cinderella story. It's set in the traditional sort of time period and in England. And then, you know, you turn up and she's this, you know, sort of like California gal, you know, what, how did, you know, that idea come together? I mean, the, we, I talked to the, um, I talked to the director, um, Andy about that actually. And, you know, we discussed maybe doing an accent and, you know, this and that. And he said, no, I think it's really fun that she's from a completely different world. She's talking about designers and she's from a different place um and whether it was california or american or you know whatever it is um she's talking about elon musk she's talking about very modern things so to in, you know to keep that as a very separate entity in the whole story he thought was really interesting so um he decided on that and i probably spared everyone from my english accent anyway so it probably worked out for the best <laughs> And I mean, you, you, you mentioned uh, Andy, you know, the director Andy Edwards there. He's kind of a, 
he's you know a British filmmaker who's very much on the on the rise within the, the UK horror scene what is he like as a as a collaborator how is he to work with oh he's amazing he's he's um very calm very collaborative everything you could ask for in a director and, and um yeah I would just say calm and collaborative are the two things that come to mind and I think you know like some, you know, for me to go and you're working with a bunch of British actors and to pop in and you're, you know, I was there for a period of time, but not the entire filming and, and for someone to be able to make you feel so comfortable and welcomed and, um, and just have the vision, you know, he knows what he wants. He's doing what he wants. And every time I looked at the, the, the shots and things, it just, it looks so good. But then, you know, in the UK, that just happens a lot. I feel like the people are so on their game there. It's, I don't know what it is. I mean, my boyfriend and I joke about it. We're like, oh, she's English. She's going to be amazing. Of course. You know, it's just hair, makeup. I was working with brand new makeup people that had just come out of school that were fantastic, you know, and, and costumes. I went, they were like, oh yeah, we've got your costume. And I went, I, well, I got to try some stuff on. I mean, and it's a, such a silly, whimsical out there costume, very different from everybody else's as well. Um, and they just, they, even, even with that, I went, wait, I'm trying on one thing. I have no other options. And yes, it's a small budget film, but, and it works and they just get it. The eye and the artistry and, you know, it's just, it's, it's fun to, it's really fun to work in the UK for me. I love it. The wig makers. I've done a lot of other things there too. And I've worked at Shepperton studios and I've done some big budget things and just the, the craftsmanship of people there is just awesome. I love it. I love coming and working there. I think something that's that's always good about you know a horror film is that there's always the possibility for a sequel and I think this one kind of has a of a cheeky wink to camera at the end you know would you would you uh you know put on the the you know the wings again if they asked you? I think so yeah why not well let's see how this one does first let's see if anyone watches it it's coming it's coming out in theaters I don't know if it's coming out in, in the UK but it's coming out throughout the states on the 26th i think of april so let's you know fingers crossed people go and see it and have a blast and have a good time and what it's meant to be and you know and and, and enjoy it so and while i you know i have you it kind of feels remiss to you know to not mention your know, species which is somehow 30 next year which doesn't seem possible because i mean you know we're both 20 still right so it's like, that's right <laughs> Exactly. So how this film is, you know, how this film is turning 30. But you know, this that was one of like your first roles in, in the industry. What, you know, how has that film, you know, so how do you look back on that film and the character of Syl, you know, what does it mean to you? I mean, the, the, the film is so sentimental to me. Um, it gave me every, it gave me every opportunity that I've had. It changed my life. It was the first film I ever made. It was, you know, um, fun to be this sort of female icon. It was very early on in the days where women were, were getting to be these, the, not only the star of a film, but the strength in the film. It was kind of early days for that in some ways, particularly in the sci-fi realm. And um, so, you know, I think, I think I got really lucky. I think I got really, really lucky to be in that film and I'm super grateful for it. And obviously working with incredible actors like, Sir Ben Kingsley um, and, and, and Michael Madsen, who I spent time, who I still see and spend time with on occasion. Um, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Yeah. It's, it's lasted. It's funny. I meet people still to this day that have just seen it that are like 20 something years old. And I'm like, what really, you know, it's just so interesting. It's still got this little following. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's cool. Well, it's, it's a, you know, it's a great one. It's like you say, it is, one of those ones that's sort of at the start of because we still still don't really have you know many female villains and whilst you know still a, she's a villain but then also is she because she's not strictly fully human you know she's sort of driven by you know by her more sort of like oh, alien she... alien side right. um yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's always kind of you know fun to you know then see sort of the, the legacy that a character like Sil has had because there are sort of more of these female characters that have come through since then absolutely for sure yeah I still see films to this day that I'm like oh my god there's so much species in there or in in different ways right like I watched uh, Poor Things the other day and watching her character be 
you know, with the baby, with the young brain inside the thing. And, you know, the, these concepts have been around forever. It's not like species invented any of that, but, but to see these kinds of characters being played of innocence and growing and learning. And, and I was just like, wow, that's cool. I saw a lot of the stuff, you know, I mean, Emma was unbelievable. I was so glad she won the Oscar for that. So happy. Um, but yeah, it's fun to see those kind of influences still in film in that way. And I guess in a way it sort of started your trend of playing these characters again, sort of like like the fairy godmother who can be viewed more in shades of, of grey because, okay, she's you know, she's sort of the devil on Cinderella's shoulder. But she, as you said, you know, she's trying to help her. You know, these people are awful to, you know, I think out of all the Disney princesses, you know, Cinderella has it kind of the roughest because, you know, she's taken you know she loses her family and then she's like treated as like the slave and it's, yeah, uh, it's orphaned and enslaved and yeah, yeah it's you know it, it's it's pretty tragic but I mean, a lot of your your characters have that sort of shade of, of gray to them is that something that you sort of look for in particular when you're you're picking out a, a female role um I love to play I have often played strong characters but 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 uh, you know, you want them to have more than one color, of course. That's the idea, at least. It doesn't always work. <laughs> it's not always written that way. It's not It's not always available. But, I mean, ideally, you want to play something because such is life, right? That is life. For me, that's life. That's my life. It's various colors of <laughs> black and white and gray and all the, all the in-between. So, so if you get an opportunity to play something with a little bit more of that, then, then perfect. <laughs> you know, definitely perfect. But... Um, I think it is, you know, sometimes it's definitely written much more straight in one note and, you know, and trying to bring something to that is challenging, but, you know, you, you try, <laughs> you fight every now and again for some dialogue changes or, or, you know, something else, but yeah, you give it a go. <laughs> one of your recent films that I, I really enjoyed uh, was Condition of Return. Um, oh, huh. Yeah. which is I mean I say enjoy it's it's a tough you know it's a it's a tough film and it it went to you know it went in a direction I wasn't expecting it to you know it sort of starts off and it's very much a true crime sort of fiction piece and then suddenly there's this whole supernatural element and again it's you know it seems to be you sort of you know going you know sort of like helping this you know empower these you know sort of like damaged women into into taking their power Gosh, quite... there's a lot of similarities between the yeah. two roles. I didn't think about that at all, but there are similarities. You're right. Wow, you're really drawing some lines that I've never thought about. That's funny. That's really interesting. Mm. You know, you're just doing the good fight of championing, you know, championing female voices. So, you know, I'd love to give you... By playing mm -hmm. fairy godmothers and devils and such. <laughs> we all need in our lives um and i get i guess sort of you know my, my final question with you know cinderella's revenge in in theaters in the u.s soon why do you hope that people take a chance on on this film because i mean personally i think it's a great film to see in a you know in a crowd you know with the popcorn it kind of feels like that sort of communal viewing experience it it, it definitely is i mean it's a movie meant to you know be fun and you know that exactly it's a popcorn film so I mean, I hope people love it. I mean, anyone who loves and doesn't mind getting the, you know, irked by blood or horror or any of that stuff will have a good time with it, I'm sure. And I think the acting's good. And, you know, there's, there's some really, it looks amazing. It's fun. It's a fun film to watch. It's really fun. Lauren, oh, Cinderella. I just fell in love with her. She's such a talented actress. I, I'm blown away by her she's 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 great so i think people will not be disappointed in her performance either she's fantastic so well i um well thank you for your time again and i wish you best of luck with the release and you know who knows we we might be talking again from uh, a sequel part two <laughs> part two <laughs>